Welcome to Mighty Car Mods Season 5, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. It's going to be a massive season with new mods and new cars like this one. Yes, yeah, so now it has been a little while since we showed you guys the 180SX and now it's time to tell you why it's been so long because I had an arrangement with Marty. Uh, there were some special conditions that I put in place before we could work on the 180SX. What, what, what did you have to do, Martin? It's required to purge myself of all Subarus. Sign here. That's right. That's you, you are hearing correctly. Stop the music. Marty no longer has a Subaru. He doesn't own one. They're all gone. It was one of the rules. And that means now he can be a proper Nissan owner. He's not like I've got my Nissan and my Subaru. He has to be a Nissan driver. That's right. I'm a Nissan owner. That's right, Martin. So uh, it's been a long time since you've seen the car. Obviously, it's broken, so it hasn't moved. Um, but Martin, let me show you again your new car. Get excited, mate. Look at it. I love it. I've got such fond memories, man, of driving around Castle Hill, Boston Hill, Glenhaven, Glenorie, Hornsby Heights in my 180. What a car. It's got rust and everything. Free rust. Oh, it's a free proper... rust there, free rust here. It's got like a bonnet that doesn't work. It's a one of those proper, proper 180SX. It's full of rust, broken and unregistered. Perfect. Perfect. This is a Nissan 180SX, and it's seen better days. It's been sitting undriven for over five years. It's full of rust, it's unregistered, it smells like fruity balls, and I'm not talking about lollies, and to top it all off, it's got a blown engine. But we can't argue with the price, it was only 600 bucks. with the infamous SR20 engine, the fifth car we've had with this power plant. Our plan is to turn this into a drift car, but we're going to need some help from our mate Andrew, who's a bit of an Obi Nissan Kenobi. His S14 Sylvia has over 400 kilowatts at the wheels, and he knows a little bit about drifting too. moved for five years and all we know is that it's got a blown engine so we're gonna find out what's wrong with it before we start on the drifting mods. This is the look of a confused Subaru owner. Interesting flat four isn't it? How they've kind of stood it up on its side and then put two cylinders next to each other and then they've turned it around and they're you know using flat four technology. Hmm. Well, obviously, we have an SR20 DUT, so that's a good start. It ain't NA, it ain't CA, it ain't rubbish. It's manual. Well, it is rubbish because it's yeah, well, blown. It's, apparently, it's blown. We don't actually know what's wrong with it yet, but we've cleaned it, which will help look at what's wrong. But until we try and start it, who knows? But the worst case scenario is if the engine's cactus, we can just pull it out, get another one for a thousand bucks, smash it in. So who cares? It's manual, which means the swap's easy. So now it looks like the previous owner's gone to town on it, mate. There's, already, actually, a, there's yes. already a front mount in there. It's already got an intercooler um, kit. Brakes and support. Yep. The pod filter to lose some kilowatts? Yes, there is. So there's inner cooler, there's pod filter. Uh, it is a aftermarket exhaust manifold. That's actually probably worth as much as what we paid for the car. Oh, and if you have a look at this, we have Chiching an aftermarket turbocharger. Right, uh, serial number 739. That is a Disco Potato. So we've got a, a, uh, a nice little bolt-on Garrett 2860 RS. So rated to about 300 horsepower. Aftermarket exhaust manifold's kind of cool. Ooh, the exhaust is not very healthy. So we'll leave that one. Standard airflow meter. <laughs> Injectors are standard, so it's probably got a standard ECU, so that'll limit power, but that's probably a good thing. We don't want to make too much power in a basic drift car. The intercooler looks disgusting, and I've never seen rust on aluminium before, so somehow the intercooler has rusted. The piping's probably filled with blown engine oil. We'll worry about that later. Um, what about this, this rubber hose over the um, exhaust manifold there? That's not something we would normally recommend. Is that something you do with, you, with your builds? This could possibly be the stupidest. This is worse than rust. A rubber hose to a catch can over an exposed exhaust manifold. This will catch on fire. It's just a matter of how long. So the person who did this needs to be slapped in the face with, well, with a rubber hose, I guess. I can see so much oil residue. that you, There'd probably be enough oil residue on there if you melted it down. You'd probably do an oil change with it. 
It'd be a bit dirty, but you know, that's all right. It's a dirty Nissan. Nissan, anyway. Nissan. Got to get used to saying it properly, hey. Nissan. The that thing is... that you got to do now is you um, lick your hand, <laughs> rub it in the back. <laughs> No pubic hair, no not pubic one. Hair. It has a rear strut brace that looks like it doesn't do anything because it actually flexes more than what the car does. So clearly that's an ineffective strut brace. When you work on a Nissan, one thing's very important. Safety glasses, because so much crap will fall on your face and into your eyes. And that's not fun at all. Oh. It has a really, really rusty exhaust. Very, very, very rusty. So I've had a look over the car, there's no dead bodies in it, there's no pubes that we've managed to find so far with Moog's pube radar. Um, and the car hasn't been cut in half, but it doesn't actually run, so we need to get in there and give it a full service and make it run reliably. Now because of the unknown history of this engine, we're going to do a compression test, which is a really easy way of seeing what condition those pistons are in underneath all that flat four stuff on the top. A compression test works by measuring the pressure created by each cylinder when the engine is cranked, with the ignition system disabled so the engine can't actually run. What does it feel like working on a mad Nissan, Martin? Well, it's not a mad Nissan, but it's a Nissan, and I'll tell you what, this is a lot easier than doing the same thing on two roofs. Good luck. You cut that whole car in half down the middle to do this job. We're looking for numbers of over 140 PSI on each cylinder. Pressure less than that on any cylinder will help tell us where it's broken. If you have a Nissan and you don't know what spark plug to get, buy a BKR7E. It will work in all of them and they come with a multiple different range of plug gaps. Just go 0.9 to be safe. That's my advice. Yep. Right. Jump pack turned on? Uh, don't know. Is it on the switch on the back? Oh, there we go. Switch to on. Alright. Jump the switch, engage. Yep, cool. What have we got? 100 and... About 160 something. That's good. Excuse That's me, perfect. Arch? 160s. That's what it should be. That's like more than what a standard one will make that's old. Really? Yeah. You'd ones. be lucky to have one that's like dead standard that's 10 years old make that. Well, 20 years old. I should say. We're awesome. doing well. We're doing very well. All right, that's one cylinder. That's one of four. Yeah, yeah. Three more to go. <laughs> three, three to go. Come on. We're getting really good numbers on all the cylinders so far, and we've done three of them. One to go. Which part of the engine's blown exactly? The guy, I actually asked the guy, what's blown? And he goes, I don't know. And I said, well, what happened when it blew up? He goes, it stopped. I went, yeah, but like, did it explode? Did oil come out? Did smoke come out? Did water come out? And he goes, oh, there was like a bit of smoke and it stopped. Hey, I've got a crazy idea. Why don't we just compression test the last cylinder? And if it's fine, let's just start it. That's not crazy. It's, I'm surprised. I would have just started it. That's hey, genius, personally. man. That's actually genius. Start, buy the car, start it, and drive it around to skids. You can give it five minutes. Yeah. Perfect, man. She good. What is it? It's even higher than the rest of them. <laughs> not bad, eh? So it's like one, it's 170, man. So if it compression tests that high, and there's no oil on the ground, and well, we need to actually check top. that there's oil in it, and check that there's some fluids in there, and then let's just start it. Nah, we'll pack it back in. New plugs are put in, and the coil packs are reinstalled. We top up the oil, and we're going to try and start it. It won't start, it's blown. Dude, it's in the on position. Are you turn ready? It, turn it. Ready? Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it blew something else. That's a maybe turbo blown. He said it stopped running. It sounds healthy, man. He said it stopped. So what causes a car? to stop running. If when you put the brakes on and turn the key off, that stops it. So if your car's running, <laughs> if your car's running and then it stops, but you don't turn it off, what would cause it to turn off? Other than dead the fuel, chemical. Dead fuel pump. Actually, it's, fuel pump? It, does, it does smell it's petrol. Like petrol. Electrics, smell like? yeah. Electrics can cause a car to turn off. An alternator can cause a car to eventually drain its battery. 
That's I, re I reckon it's a petrol thing. It stinks like fuel, man. It stinks like fuel, and the um the spark plugs were black. Yeah. Not in the good way. That could be lots of things as well. We noticed on the dash that the battery light is lit up, meaning something's wrong with the charging circuit or the battery itself. So we put a multimeter on to measure it and we're only seeing 12.2 volts. I mean, there might be some electrical fault with airflow meters and computers or whatever, yeah. but mechanically it runs. And Under what circumstances did the previous person say that it blew up? He didn't know. He actually just said to me, I was driving and it stopped. And then I said, why did it stop? He goes, I don't know. I go, did you try and check? He goes, no, I put it on a tow truck to my brother's house and left it there for five right. years. What we do know though is that it's not charging, right? That's right, it's not charging properly. It's only getting 12 volts out of the alternator. Um, well, it's getting nothing out of the alternator actually. Nothing. It's not charging the battery and you can only run it for so long on a battery before it just goes, I don't have enough power and then it dies. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not working on this dirty Nissan alone. We're going to pull it apart and fix stuff. You know what, what, what working on this car is like? Did you know if you get open your mouth, if I scrape of my hands, but if I scrape some of that shit off the back of your teeth, and no. No, not again. No, that was the dirty, man. Show me the teeth. That was dirty as. And see, I wipe that on the front of your teeth. All the bacteria, this is a fact. All the bacteria from the back of your teeth mm. in the next 24 hours that I wiped on the front of your teeth will crawl back to where they came from on the back of your teeth. Really? And that is a fact. How does that relate to this? My bacteria <laughs> is a Subaru, mate. I've been lying on the front of a Subaru's tooth all this time. I'm crawling back, mate. I'm crawling back to the, the Nissan days. That's genius. Vacation to do. Did you know that a, that a Micra is also a Nissan? Yes. That's a Nissan, like a Nissan. Yeah, but it's not a real-wheel drive Nissan. Dude, it doesn't matter, it's a Nissan. It's like two parts of the Nissan. It has the same spirit. There's the general consumer front-wheel drive rubbish and four-wheel drive, all that oh, sort of stuff. Oh, dude, right? be careful what you're oh, saying. Marty loves micros. Right. There. I would go as far as saying, Marty, you possibly even like a Micra more than you like this 180. Is that true? I wouldn't say Micra. I'd say I like a March more than it because it's got that weird kind of supercharger. Oh. So it was the best sounding car. I need, I need in to history. rename it. I, I'm not a Nissan enthusiast. I'm a I'm a rear wheel drive platform Dude. turbocharged Nissan enthusiast. Dude, well, everybody has to be a bogan at some point in their life. North South engine. <laughs> That's why you need them. Safety glasses always. And a dirty Nissan. Our first snapped bolt. That never happens on Subarus. Marty continues to be both amazed, disgusted, and intrigued by the rusty Nissan. That's car, man. That was car. He's dirty. This is like the olden days, Martin, when I had fast cars. Dude, what's going on here? Well, do you have do you have drift drift damage repaired jeans on? I'm not trying to be like fashionable <laughs> or something. It's just, my jeans were falling down, man. They're, they're full of holes, and I had some cable ties there. Even up here, look at this. Zips broken, buttons broken. I'm not trying to be like JDM fashion or something. It's actually quite clever. Thank you, Martin. Does it work though? That doesn't look like it's gonna last. It's totally functional, mate. Hella functional gene mod. JDM panties. Dude, they're not JDM panties, I've seen those. <laughs> We're really hoping that the intercooler pipes aren't full of blown turbo parts. Luckily, it's all clear. The 180's getting all new fluids. They haven't mixed inside the engine, which is a massive bonus. The radiator's coming out so we can do a full service. To get the radiator out, uh, it's easiest to take the fan off uh, at the same time. So we're just putting a 10 mil down in here. We're gonna ratchet these off. And then when this comes out, the fan will come off with it. And then we can change 
everything. Our lives. We can change our lives, Martin. You're used to all-wheel grip. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when you just fling this thing into a corner and wrap yourself around a pole? You're going to love it. Wrap myself around a pole? Yeah. Not very nice. No, oh, as in a girl from track. Poland. I'm going to change the water pump. Uh, we're going to inspect inside the fuel tank. Marty's going to change the alternator. Is there anything specific we need to know about changing the alternator on here? Yeah, once it's all loose and adjusted and all off and everything, there's just basically one big long bolt. So this bolt here actually has a, a nut on the back. So that's holding so once the that nut's in. undone, it will... Yeah, okay. That, oh. that should be... That should have a bolt. That should have a nut on the end of that bolt. So... That shouldn't have done that. What's holding the alternator in other well, now, than the nothing. oil? Nothing now. It was also loose. Believe it or not, this may have not even had a broken alternator. It could have been a really, really, really loose belt. I think I love that the only thing holding that bolt in oil. was the oil leak. Yeah. <laughs> right, that wasn't even done up tight. That's pretty good. None of this car's done up tight. Mate. This one isn't either. This was just like finger tight. <laughs> Marty's not even using tools to change the alternator. He's just <laughs> using his hands. I'm serious. I haven't used a spanner yet. I've got one central spanner. That's all I've got. And you need a twelve, mate. I know, because it's not bloody done up. It's I'm literally good. dangling around like some dangly balls. Oh wow, that's so dirty. Oh dude, hand. look at it. That's the problem, isn't it? Look at it, man. It's Kate, it's disgusting. Cars that are going sideways at full throttle need their cooling system to be upgraded and in top condition, so we're replacing the water pump and the entire cooling system. We also need to inspect the fuel tank. Luckily it's all fine and the bonus is we've got an upgraded fuel pump. When degreasing with a pressure washer, it's okay to spray below the head, but don't spray above it as you risk damaging your electrical bits. This means you don't end up a dirty Nissan owner covered in grease, you'll just be a dirty Nissan owner, like me. Filthy out of Nissan, one dirty, one out at a time. With the water pump and thermostat removed, we can flush clean water through the whole cooling system. It's a good idea to blast any stray bits of water off your electrical components with compressed air. Now that's done, it's time to scrape off the old gasket goo and install the new pump and thermostat. Okay, so the water pump that was on there before has these four studs going through it. The new pump doesn't actually come with studs, so we're just putting through these 10 mil bolts. We're going to thread them through, and then we're good to go, and it's going to be mad. While I'm changing the pump, Marty and Andrew are trying to figure out why our replacement alternator off a newer model Sylvia doesn't fit. Okay, now, surprisingly, the internet lied to us because we were told that an S14 alternator will fit on an S13, uh, but in our case, that's not true because the terminal that goes off the back of the alternator is actually a lot bigger on the alternator we're trying to put on and the strap's too small. So we're gonna replace that with a big one and we're going to throw it into there, under there, and then we will have power, which means we have petrol power, which means we can do skids. Even though the part was built for the same platform, the newer alternator doesn't fit. Subaru don't do that. Brakes on like a 1989 car will fit like an 05 car. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that something from a 1989 model Subaru will fit on a 2003 model Subaru? If it's perfect, why would you change it? We're putting on a Nismo thermostat. And quick tip, if you don't drive a Nissan, don't put a Nismo sticker on it. Check that the new and old belts are around the same size before installing.
So we've got our old fuel filter. These are often neglected, usually because they're a pain in the butt to extract from a car, but we've extracted it, and we're gonna put in a brand new fuel filter to make sure it's getting only the cleanest burnout juice. Use a socket on the power steering pump to stop the pulleys turning while you tension it all up. We're putting in an aftermarket radiator that's almost three times as thick as the stock one. This means better cooling and that means more skids for a longer amount of time. We gotta get I'm replacing the pod filter with a clean one. We don't have a stock airbox, but a clean filter will mean we get more kilowatts. Using braided hose on anything that runs near the exhaust manifold. Next, the whole thing goes back together, and fingers crossed that it actually starts. We gotta get it. The coolant overflow bottle on these cars can get brittle and crack with age. GK Tech make a factory replacement part that fits straight on. And now it's time to actually see if it starts. And if it does, it means today's work has been all worth it. If it doesn't start, then it's going to be uh, a, a long night. Are we good to go? Yeah. yeah. Are we good to go? All right, let's do it. I hope it starts. It doesn't, like, blow up. Yeah, get back. Okay. Ready? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yeah! The alternator is now charging the battery and the engine appears to be working as it should. Next time on Mighty Car Mods.